Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Caitlin, your favorite mission girl. How's everybody doing? It's beautiful, it's bright, it's sunny out here in Michigan. I was able to take a bike ride today, which is so nice because on Thursday I tried taking a bike ride and I got caught in a rainstorm, so that was not fun at all. But today it was nice, it was sunny, I got to go for a bike ride, it was so much fun, so enjoyable, I loved it, and then I came back home and I went next door to Speedway and got a Slurpee! Of course I did, it's summer. I get these things like, this is my big summer vice. Dur year round, my big vice is ice cream, but during the summer, these are my big vice. I drink these during the winter too, but during the winter, I really only drink them like once or twice a week. And during the summer, I go three times a week. That's how much I love them. But it's okay because during the summer, I also have more of a chance to work on my weight loss because I'm biking almost every day. I'm out walking or jogging almost every day. I'm still doing yoga about three times a week, Monday through Fridays, and then twice on Saturday. So I'm still on top of my weight loss, you guys. I'm very proud of myself. I'm below 170 pounds. I've lost over 100 pounds since I started. But I am still, there's still this fear in the back of my mind that if I let up for just a minute, I'm going to bounce back up to like 273, 275, which is 273 is where I was when I started my weight loss. And 275 was the heaviest I had ever been that I know of. So I don't want to go back to that. I'm enjoying it. It is frustrating sometimes um, because I am losing weight at a, I'm losing weight at kind of a steady rate. Like I will plateau and then I will drop. So for the, a few weeks I was plateauing at about 170 and then I just dropped between now I'm, now I'm hovering between 166 and 168. But it's also frustrating because it's nice losing all this weight, but I'm starting to get frustrated because more and more of my clothes are not, are getting too big for me. Um, on Wednesday, this past Wednesday, I wore my Loki t-shirt from Hot Topic that I had just bought like two months, like a few months ago. And it was tight on me. It wasn't too small, but it was like just on this side of too small. It fit, but it was tight. And I put it on Wednesday and it was loose. And so was my Black Widow shirt. But to be fair, I bought the Black Widow shirt like two years ago. So a lot of my clothes are starting to get looser and not fit. And I think I have to drop down a size in spirit jerseys um, because my medium spirit jerseys are starting to be loose. I, for the record, I started getting spirit jerseys and I think extra, extra large. And then I dropped down to extra large. And now I'm down to medium and I'm starting to thinking, oh, maybe I need to start getting smalls because they're men's sizing. So <laughs> that's the joy of weight loss. I feel like I, with this new job, as soon as I get started, one of the things I'm going to have to do is I might have to go buy some new clothes because <laughs> I feel like I'm like, what is wrong with me? Like this shirt I'm wearing, I got from the Disney outlet store in March and I think it's a 2X or I think it's a 2 or 3X. I'm like, oh, it's a ladies 2 or 3X. It's going to be a little tight on me because Disney sizes tend to run small. It's massive on me. So I'm like, oops. So that's fun. Also, the shorts I just got this year, they're starting to get too small for me, too big for me. And I'm like, yay for losing weight because I feel healthier. I feel happier than I have in years. And I'm really enjoying losing weight. Um, but at the same time, it's like, can I just like stop for like two months, like not gain any weight, but maybe not like lose weight so that I have a time to enjoy the clothes I bought. <laughs> like my fear is I just bought, um, for this year, I bought new swim, a uh, new swim bottoms and swim top. I'm not worried about my swim top being too big because I can adjust it. It's an underwire so I can adjust it and fix it. I'm worried about my swim bottoms being too big and I'm wearing them Monday. So cross my fingers, they don't fall off. Um, but yeah, I got a new job. Also, I went and I saw Black Widow last sun this past Sunday, the 11th. You guys, I love Black Widow. Hate me, play me in the comments if you want. Diss me, whatever. Fight me on this. I thought Black Widow was amazing. I loved it. I love seeing Scarlett Johansson one more time as Natasha Romanoff. I love the fact that it wasn't Natasha's origin story. You know, origin stories are great. I loved the Iron Man movie. Iron Man's one of my favorite movies. Captain America, First Avenger is really cool. Thor is really good. But at this point, when we're this far into the MCU and we already know these characters, I'm not so sure that I need a full-blown origin story for her. Like Spider-Man. What I love with Spider-Man is they did not give um, this version of Spider-Man a full-blown origin movie like they did 
with Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield. At this point, we know, we have the general background of how Spider-Man became Spider-Man. What drives him? We don't need a third Spider-Man movie saying, oh, here's his origin story. We don't really need that. So I really liked that their introduction of Spider-Man in the MCU wasn't another origin story. He was just already established as Spider-Man. So I really enjoyed that. And that's kind of what I was happy with Black Widow. I'm thinking maybe some people expected it to be a full-blown origin story. I actually did not want that. I did not want a full-blown origin story. Did I want to know about what happened in Budapest? Yes. And we learned what happened in Budapest. Did I want the entire movie to be about that? No, I did not want the entire movie to be about what happened in Budapest. I just wanted a really cool, nice way to say goodbye to Natasha Romanoff. And that is what I got. And we got introduced to Yelena which I, for Yelena, this works as an origin story. And what I find interesting is the Yelena is also a Black Widow. It isn't just this name that was given to Natasha for her own use. Literally, the, these, the Red Room was training Black Widows, these female assassins. So I love the fact that when the title Black Widow, yes, Natasha is the main character, but at the same time, you could also argue that Yelena is also a main character and that this movie is also about her. So I'm really excited to see Yelena going forward into the MCU. I hope we see her a lot more. I think we will. Um, so I'm really, really excited to see Yelena. I think she's hysterical. She made me laugh. And it's so it was so interesting to see because I feel like we didn't really see Natasha with the Avengers really kind of... We saw her let go and be a little bit more open and fun. But with um, there weren't really a lot of moments where we saw her being kind of vulnerable. And I think in Black Widow, that allowed Scarlett Johansson and the writers to kind of create these moments where we saw Black Widow be a little bit more vulnerable. I mean, we saw like a snippet of her childhood. So we saw... Um, in essence, what she had for a very brief period of time before she was flung back into this world stained red with blood and forced to do these horrible things. I mean, they, when they talk about Budapest, they, she did something very horrible that kind of crushed her in order to break free and to join S.H.I.E.L.D. So I loved Black Widow. I thought it was a really good movie. I think some people are mad about the Taskmaster reveal, which for me... I didn't know a lot about Taskmaster going into Black Widow. Actually, Ta the Black Widow was the first time I'd ever heard of Taskmaster. And then he appeared as one of the bosses in the Avengers game. Um, but he wasn't there for very long. So for me, I don't really have... An so I didn't really have a concept of who Taskmaster was, what I should expect. So for me, the reveal of who Taskmaster is in Black Widow, and I'm not going to spoil it for people who haven't seen it, that didn't bother me. I actually thought it was kind of cool, and it was kind of fitting. So I really liked that. Um, I'm also wondering if some people are mad because neither Robert Downey Jr. nor Chris Evans was in Black Widow. And there was a lot of stuff going around online saying, oh, RDJ is going to be in Black Widow. Chris Evans is going to be in Black Widow. They're listed on set credits for the movie. They're going to be in the movie. They're going to do this. Da, da, da. Here's the thing. I did not believe RDJ or Chris Evans was going to be in Black Widow. The reason for this is Endgame was their last movie and their contracts with Marvel were up. So that is also why neither RDJ nor Chris Evans return for Marvel's What If. They're not portraying the voices of their characters. Their contracts are up and they're ready to spread their rings and see what else is out there. I mean, RDJ has his own podcast. He's absolutely hysterical. Um, yes, they love Marvel and yes, they owe a lot to Marvel. But the thing is, and I don't think people, I think, I wish more people would understand this, is when you do a big film franchise like Star Wars, and Marvel, and I think Mark Hamill has talked about this, Carrie Fisher has talked about this, I think even Harrison Ford has talked about this. When you do a franchise like that, and not just a movie franchise, even a show like Full House, you run the risk of just, when, that, when your time with that franchise is over, of just being typecast. And the thing is, is both RDJ and Chris Evans are amazing actors who have done amazing work outside of the typical character, outside of Iron Man, and Steve Rogers. So I understand. So they, of course, will want to go and see more. I mean, 
Robert Downey Jr. I think was nominated for an Oscar before he even did Iron Man. So these are both these two guys are very amazing actors. I mean, I think every actor in Marvel is amazing, and the same with Star Wars. It's just that you really have to kind of fight to get out of that. So I I, I applaud RDJ and Chris Evans for saying, okay, we love Marvel, we're we're done. We will always love. They will always. They have said it. They love Marvel. They love working as those characters and spending so long as them. But at a certain point, you have to move on. And at the same token, RDJ is getting up there. And I'm not sure how much longer he would really be able to handle being Iron Man. <laughs> so um, it's like they want to do it for like some of these acts. Some actors are saying they want they want to do this forever. Tom Hilson, I saw on Facebook. I'm not sure how much I believe this or not. Tom Hilson says that as long as Disney and Marvel keep calling him to play Loki in the MCU, he will do Loki for as long as they let him. Like, he loves playing Loki, which you can see in the show. Um, but, and I think Tom would really like to keep playing Spider-Man. And I'm pretty sure Sebastian Stan is, like, 100% in love playing Bucky. So for some of these actors, it's not really a tour to keep playing these characters over and over and over again. But for some, at a certain point, they're like, we want to move on. And that's what RDJ and Chris Evans did. So for me, I did not believe they were going to be in Black Widow because I knew that their contracts were up and they were ready to move on. Um, same with Scarlett Johansson. She's played Black Widow for 10 years. And so at this point, I'm sure as much as she loves Black Widow, she was more than happy to pass on that mantle to Florence, who Florence Pug, I think is the name. I can't say her last name. Who played the Elena. So I think it's time we have a new version of Black Widow. So I'm happy. I love Black Widow. Thank you so much, Scarlett Johansson, for bringing Natasha Romanoff to life and giving her a lot of depth and just introducing me to a character that I really wasn't familiar with and now I love and adore. Um, Loki, though, is still my favorite Marvel character. And you guys, Loki, the season finale was this past Wednesday. That show was blow your mind, amazing, crazy, trippy as heck. I think I said it before, I didn't think any of the shows was going to knock WandaVision off its pedestal for me. Um, but oh my god, first episode Loki, WandaVision dropped from number one to number two as my favorite Marvel show. Um, Loki was amazing. I loved the season finale. I loved the character Sylvie. I must be weird because I think I'm one of the few people who really didn't think that a romance, didn't find the romance, romance part between Loki and Sylvie to be that weird. I didn't even find it to be very narcissistic. I think it really was just these two characters who are variants of each other, but they're also very different. Sylvie is very different in personality from Loki, and I think that's what you have to understand. The variants are different personalities. Loki is not like classy Lo classic Loki. He's not Bozro Loki. He's not presidential Loki. He's not kid Loki. He is just Loki. And Sylvie is the same. They have totally different personalities. They've had totally different experiences. They're variants of the same person, but that doesn't mean they're going to be identical. Their experiences and how their lives are going to shape them into complete individuals. And so I did not see the romance between Loki and Sylvie as narcissism because I didn't see Loki and Sylvie as the same being. I saw them as two separate people. And I'm thinking that's, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how everybody saw them. So for me, it wasn't like when Mobius called it narcissistic, I yelled at the TV. I'm like, you're a jerk. They're not, nar it's not narcissism. They're not the same exact person. You know, there is no way for that. So I didn't never, I didn't have an issue with the romance. I thought it was cute. I thought it was sweet. It broke my heart. I'm, again, I'm not going to spoil anything. It was a really awesome episode. And yes, one thing I will spoil is, heck yeah, we are getting a season two of Loki, baby. Yes, I'm so excited. I was so happy. I actually learned that before I watched the episode. So that ruined the one part for me. But I'm so happy we are getting a second season of Loki. So, of the Marvel shows that have aired or are set to air, it is confirmed that we will be getting a season two of Marvel What If, and we are getting a season two of Loki, which is only fair. I'm not going to spoil the ending for you, but I will say it is very jarring for a season finale of a show to end like that. Very jarring, very abrupt, but oh, so good and so worth it. A couple people have been calling 
Loki Marvel's Doctor Who, and I'm thinking that's interesting, and I've never even seen Doctor Who, so maybe I should try Doctor Who. Um, because if I like Loki, maybe I'll like Doctor Who. But um, tell me what you guys think. Should I try watching Doctor Who? But I loved Loki. In fact, I went on to Etsy and I found a shop that has a Loki spirit jersey, and I went, Yes, please. Um, Loki is my favorite. I love Loki so much. In fact, I now have a drawing of Loki. Excuse me one minute while I go get the drawing. I'm sure none of you all wanted to see that. And I'm sorry for giving you the extreme close-up of my ugly mug. And my computer went dark. Okay. So I went to um, Marvel Comic Book Hero Night at the Looms on the 10th. And I came home with this. They had an artist there giving away free sketches. And, of course, I was dressed as Loki. It was so much fun. People recognized me. And most of the night, I had people, they saw me as Loki, would come up and go, well, don't cause mischief. Like, they had people dressed up as Black Widow, Ant-Man, and Thor. And, actually, they had a worker there who was dressed up as Thor. But I was told not to cause mischief. And at the end of the night, I'm walking away, and the worker dressed as Thor said, did you cause any mischief? And I went, no, because if I did, the loons would have won. The loons lost, by the way. But since I promised both Thors that I wouldn't use my powers and cause mischief at the game, that means I couldn't use my abilities to help the loons win. So don't tell Loki not to use those powers because if you don't, because if I had used, if I had been Loki and used powers, the loons would have won. But um, this guy had this sketch of Loki already prepped and done, and then he drew this for me. He's like, saw me, he's like, so what, so do I need to take a guess what character you want? And I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> Seriously, Loki is my favorite MCU character, and um, Miss Marvel's actually my favorite character from the comics. I'm actually really excited to see her in the MCU, but I think Loki will always be my favorite MCU character. And I want to read um, Agent of Asgard now, and then read um, Young Avengers so I can see Kid Loki. So I just love Loki. I think he's awesome. So I love Loki. It was an amazing show, and I can't wait for season two. And now I'm on to waiting for Marvel's What If, waiting for Bad Batch to end, and then after Bad Batch is Star Wars Visions. And then after Marvel's What If, we're getting either Hawkeye or Miss Marvel. I'm not sure which show comes first. They're both set to debut in the fall of this year. Also, we are, I'm still waiting to see if we get a release date for the book of Boba Fett. We, I think it's coming out this year. Also, Mandalorian Season 3, they haven't made an announcement on it when they started filming. I think the whole thing with um, Gina has kind of thrown them for a loop. So I'm pretty sure they're waiting. They're trying to work things out with that. Um, like I said in Visions, I don't think they're doing Rangers of the New Republic. But I really wish they go back to the drawing board and find a way to do that. Because I think that'd be a great place to introduce a new character. And... I, I raise my hand because I would love to be in a Marvel or Star Wars show, but I don't think that will ever happen. I don't have the look. <laughs> so, that was that. Now on to the exciting thing. I'm going away next Monday to Michigan's Adventure. I'm super, super excited, and I said I would show you guys what I am taking with me to the park so that you guys can get an idea of if you're coming up to Michigan and you want to check out Michigan's Adventure, which I highly re recommend, idea this is what I bring as a native Michigander to the theme park and it's also some of the same stuff I bring with me when I go on like a day trip to like Mackinac Island or if I'm going to be outside a lot and this is similar to what I would bring so this is just a good like starting point if you're going to be in Michigan during the summer and you're going to be outside this is stuff you should bring some stuff I have that I'm bringing is actually in my car because we're taking my car down please Scarlet Ghost don't break <laughs> this is the first time we're taking my car more away from my house like I've gotten the car and I've not driven it more than maybe 10 miles away from where I live and we're driving it over two hours away this park is like I think almost 200 miles away from where I live so that is what we are doing excuse me my slurpee is melting and for those wondering coke and sprite um so Let's get started. I'm going to show you what I'm bringing with me. This first item may throw people for a loop because it is July and the temperature next week is supposed to be 85 degrees in Muskegon and 89 here. But I just dropped one of the things I'm bringing with me. But I am actually bringing a sweater again. Or this, I got this from Christopher and Mace when it was closing. It's like a cardigan, but it's a sweater. 
So I'm actually taking this with me and I'm not taking this into the park with me. This is going to be in the car. And you're probably going, Caitlin, why are you bringing a sweater? Because this is Michigan. <laughs> and that joke about in Michigan, you literally go about going through four seasons in one day. That's not a joke. I, I know some people who think that's a joke. Like when I was on Mackinac Island, like these people from down south would come up and go, it's June. Why is it so cold? And I'm like, we're in a state shaped like a mitten. Plus you're on an island. So, <laughs> but in Michigan, it literally will be like, the high will be like 90 degrees. But in the morning, it will be like 55 or 60 for a low, even though the low, according to Weather Channel, the low next Monday is only supposed to be like 66. But still, like it's almost 80 and it's cold outside because of the wind. So if you're coming to Michigan and you're going to be outside, even though the day's supposed to be warm, you're probably gonna wanna bring something like this for the morning and the evening because don't be fooled, it can be 90 degrees, but you're gonna want this in the morning. So I have gone to Michigan's Adventure before where I have started out wearing a jacket here in the morning and then getting to the park and not needing the jacket, but then needing it when I got home. So this is coming with me in the car. Another thing I am bringing with me that is in my car currently is I'm bringing a poncho. It's not supposed to ring. It's just something I got for Farmer's Market that I'm keeping in my car. It's just something nice to have on hand. Um, next, Michigan's Adventure has a water park. I will be taking a swimsuit. When we get there on the way down, I will actually be wearing the swimsuit under my clothes. But when we leave, we will stop and change into like, I'm not going to bring, I'm going to bring one pair of shorts and one, and one t-shirt, but then I'm going to bring the stuff I need to wear under my undergarments. Um, so when we leave, I'll change out of the bathing suit, put those on and put on my shirt and my shirt and shorts. If you're worried, won't you be wet? No, I'm a Michigan girl. The only time I don't like being wet is when I don't plan on it. Like when I'm biking in the freaking rain. <laughs> No, it's totally fine. It's so good. So I'm bringing a plastic shopping bag, you know, just the kind you get at the checkout that you really shouldn't get, but I'm bringing a plastic shopping bag. This is what my wet bathing suit and my wet towel are going to be in. And on that note, I'm also probably going to take a shop, really doable shopping bag in with me to keep my towel in if it doesn't fit in the backpack I have. So I have a sling bag I'm taking. But if my towel does not fit with the sunscreen and the other stuff, I'm actually going to bring a reusable shopping bag. I can't take it. The sling bag, I can take on some of the rides with me. The reusable shopping bag, I probably won't. And I'll probably just set it to the side. And here's the thing. I'm really not that scared of somebody. Want, I'm not that worried about my stuff being stolen because, knock wood, it, I, we do, Michigan is like totally like you go to Michigan's Adventure. It's like a rule. You don't touch other people's stuff. Um, so I have set stuff down and like been at the water park and left my stuff for, and gone to the other side of the water park and it's not moved. So I'm not that worried about losing my stuff, but if somebody's desperate enough to take a reusable shopping bag and a beach towel, I'm going to say, well, they probably need it more than me. And there's a shop there that I can get towels from. So I'm not that concerned about losing sight of my bag. And my sling bag, when I get to the water park, I'll probably hide under a towel. Um, speaking of, this is my sling bag. This is what I will be taking with me. I should have something else here. Ooh. Uh-oh. I gotta pause for a moment. I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that, you guys. I thought I lost something important for a minute. Um, but this is my sling bag. I actually got this, again, to use at the farmer's market, and I don't think I use that this much. So this is what I'm taking to the park. I'm loving it because it has all these extra pockets. It's got a pocket here. It's got this big pocket in here. So this will be really nice and simple and easy because I am taking my phone. I'm taking a prepaid gift card, which I'll explain why. And I have sunscreen and a hat and my car keys. So my car keys will probably, I have a, po I have a hidden pocket, so I'll put them in there. So this will be really nice because I can take this and wear it on most rides. Um, if I can't wear it with me, they're really great about like if I'm on the scrambler, I just put my bag at the bottom and that's what I'll do. Some of the rides will have you set next to the attendant and you just grab it on your way out. So I'm really, I really like this one. In the past, I've just taken a string bag, but I actually like this better than a string bag because I have more room and I feel a little bit more secure with it. Plus I'll always be able to find it because it is sunflowers and I have a couple of keychains, including 
one from Midland. You guys, this is, I don't know how well you'll see it. This is the Tridge. This is a, that's a famous bridge. So this is the backpack I'm taking. And then I have another bit, a couple more bags I'm taking. I'm taking this. I got this with my Chegg order. It's just like a little Ziploc baggie. I might put my keys in here because I have a key fob and I'm worried about it getting wet because the one ride we're going on, we're gonna try to go on is loggers as a log ride. And unlike Grand Rapids, at Grand Rapids, they have this neat system where they have these tubs on the other side of the loading zone. So when you get into your boat for the rapid ride, you can hop over really quick and put your stuff in the tub with the number of your boat on it. So it doesn't get soaking wet on the ride. They don't have that on the log ride. So I kind of want to use this to um, try and keep my keys from getting wet because I'm not sure how my key fob would do wet, soaking wet. So I'm going to be taking this. And then my dad came over and we decided to get prepaid. My mom suggested we get prepaid Visa gift cards um, because right now Michigan's Adventure is asking people not to bring cash um, because of the pandemic. And there we go. I'm gonna really gonna chip my nail pop, nails. I mean, I'm painting my nails to help protect them against the sun. So my dad and I got these waterproof bags from Walmart. So this is what my phone is going to go in while I'm there. Well, I probably won't keep my phone in there all the time because I'm gonna try to film a little bit. But when I go on a water ride or when we're at the water park or something like that, this, my phone will probably go in this bag. But we got um, prepaid Visa gift cards. So that we're not taking our credit cards or our bank cards into the park with us. We are taking our wallets with us for obvious reasons. We are going to have our wallets with us, but when we get to the park, we're not going to bring them into the park. So this is a neat option because this allows us to put money on this and we have money to spend in the park. Probably just going to use it on food. I'm not planning on really getting a whole lot of stuff. Um, but... This is just nice to have. It makes me feel more secure. I was going to take my credit card in with me, but I was really nervous about it. So I'm really happy my mom suggested these. So we went and got prepaid Visa gift cards, which I suggest for Michigan's Adventure because there's a, if you feel comfortable bringing cash, in years past, it was cash. I always took cash with me, but because of the pandemic, they changed it. So we're doing this instead. In fact, the Great Lakes Loons, they no longer want you to use cash at the Ball Diamond, at least for this season. They want you to use a credit card. And if you bring cash, get a gift card. So just another sign of the times. Instead of bringing cash with me, I got it all put on a gift card. So this is what I'm taking to pay for stuff at the park. So this might actually go into that other bag. Um, so yes, this is what I am taking to pay for stuff. I'm not the biggest fan of this waterproof bag simply because of how the um, hinges are because to open it, I have to like literally take a fingernail and get in there. So I'm kind of nervous that I'm going to get there and I'm not going to be able to open it. So there we go. So I might leave these like a little bit open so it's easier for me to open. So that's what I'm taking. Um, protection, obviously pandemic season. I'm taking two bottles of hand sanitizer cause I'm going with my dad. So I'm taking Wacky Key Beach Coconut and Orange Sunrise. And the reason is I love this. I'm not sure if my dad will love it. So I'm bringing a scent that he might love, but he might bring his own sanitizer. So hand sanitizer is a must cause I'm not sure how often they're sanitizing the rides. Um, sun protection. Big sun protection. By the way, this is the towel I'm taking. It's just an old beach towel we've had for years. I didn't get a new one. I'm like, I'll just take an old one. Um, sun protection, hugely important to me because the first year, well, the first time I went to Michigan Adventures, I don't remember because I was a baby. The second time I went, I went as an adult and I didn't put on any sunscreen whatsoever. I did it like once in the park and then left the sunscreen in the car, did not reapply it. And I sat in the sun for hours and we left because of a storm. And on the way out, I was giving my cousin a piggyback ride and I could not figure out why my left shoulder hurt so bad. And then the next morning we, I woke up and we discovered I had a massive second degree sunburn on my shoulder so bad. It was like a mass of blisters. That's how bad it was. It was gross. Um, so I've always been, so since then I've always been kind of like, Oh my gosh, I need a lot of sun protection. I do have Native American ancestry in me. I do tan. I can tan. 
But the problem is, is I have more German and Irish blood in me than Native American. So that means if I don't put on sunscreen, I tan first. I burn first before I tan. And I'm not tanning very well this summer because it's been a really weird summer. It's like we had winter. Like it was one of those years where winter lasted for like seven months. And it's just now summer. So sun protection. This is how I'm wearing my hair for Michigan's Adventure. By the way, I'm just doing pigtails because it's going to get wet. So this will be easy to manage. Um, I might braid it too. I'm not sure yet. I haven't made up my mind. But this is the hat. I'm wearing this hat because I'm also going to wear my Loons baseball shirt. So I'm going to be wearing my Loons baseball hat. And I took a picture of this and it was so funny because the Great Lakes Loons responded and called this hat vintage. I don't know how they got vintage from it. It's funny. It is one of those hats with um, UV protection built in. So that's what I like. And there's, you can't see it, but there's a smudge from chocolate ice cream. I don't know how, but the first time I wore this hat, I also got ice cream. And somehow I got chocolate ice cream on my Loon's hat. So, interesting. More sun protection. Sunscreen. I love this stuff, you guys. This is Equate Sport Sunscreen SPF 50. I love this sunscreen. And I don't think it's greasy at all. It goes on really easily. It protects really well. And now it's reef friendly, which makes it so much better and nicer. There aren't really any, there aren't any reefs here in Michigan, but this would be something, be definitely the sunscreen I would use and feel confident using if I were to go to like Florida or someplace, someplace where I'd be around reefs, um, because it is reef friendly. So this is what I use. Um, it's water resistant up to 80 minutes. So that makes it better. So I am taking Two, just in case, I don't think I'll need both of them. It's just that this is how crazy I am about protecting my son from the skin. I'm taking two bottles of sunscreen. Plus, in the past, when we've gone with friends, my cousins have only brought, like, one thing of sunscreen. And I'm like, haha, I have two. You want some? So I always have, like, extra sunscreen. Because I also know my dad won't use it. <laughs> my dad is tan. He's very tan for a white man because of being Native American. But he's very, he's he is white. He's just very tan. He's very dark complected. Um... And because of him being Native American, he's like, I don't burn. Look at how tan I am. I don't burn. Mosquitoes don't bite me. Mosquitoes don't bite you. So my dad, if my dad is to be believed, I'm immune to getting sunburned and I'm immune to getting mosquito bites because I am like one fifth Native American, one fifth, one sixth Native American. And I'm going, yeah, that's not how it works. <laughs> I still burn. I will still burn really bad and I still get to eaten alive by mosquitoes. So my dad's not really a big believer in sunscreen, which is kind of funny. Um, he burns worse than me now. Um, so, but I will have sunscreen in case he decides to use it. I don't think he will, but I love my dad. He makes me laugh. Um, I also very specifically buy this. For my lips, this is Baby Lips Moisturizing Lip Balm. And this has um, SPF. Um, this is supposed to have, um, yeah. This used to have SPF in it. Now I'm not seeing it. Um, but this usually, this doesn't have sunscreen in it. Oh, no. I think I got the wrong one. I used to get these because um, they had sunscreen in it. Now it doesn't have sunscreen in it. Oh, no. Ooh. I got so excited because I thought, oh, they have my sunscreen one. This doesn't have sunscreen in it. Oh, oh, that's okay. I will still use it. And I can just put some, I will probably figure out something to do in place of sunscreen. Um, but yeah, I got this to use. Now I'm, I'm kind of, this did used to have sunscreen in it. I'm not lying. This brand did use, but I still like baby lips and I got it as a treat. So that is the stuff that's going into my bag. What is not going into my bag is I have paper copies of my tickets, but Michigan's Adventure, much like the Disney Parks and Universal, I think not, has its own app. So I went, even before I knew we were going for sure, I went ahead and I downloaded the Michigan's Adventure Park app, which is right here. I'm not sure how well you can see it because of the sunlight. Uh, let me close my curtains. There, that might help a little bit. So this is the Michigan Adventure's Park app. And this is what I got. So I'm gonna sign in really quickly. So now I'm signed in and what this is, is if I go to me, and I'm highly recommending this if you guys come to the park, if you ever visit and decide to go to Michigan Adventures, I'm highly recommending this app. This is the first time I'm actively going to be using it, but I think it will be a game changer for us because it's just me and my dad. And this is one of the reasons why I'm taking my phone into the park, not because my dad and I have to separate. 
So this is neat because I bought my tickets and since they already had me, I bought the tickets and everything. So if I go on here, it has everything I purchased. So there's our park passes. Whoa, I hit the wrong thing. So those are our park passes. So the first two are our park passes, which is a one day pass. And then we have voucher. And this is something they're asking you to do is prepay for parking, which you can add onto your purchase. And then I got us two souvenir drink bottles. And the reason I did that is Michigan Inventors actually does not let you bring in any outside food or drink. So you can't even bring in a water bottle. You have to purchase it in the park. So the water bottles we got, these souvenir water bottles are really nice because they're like about 15 bucks, but you, you get free refills all day of your visit. And then if you go back, it's like $1 per refill. So those are really, really nice. They're expensive, but it's nice because I can have like pop and then just use, fill them up with water for the rest of the day. So that's why I got those. So parking, so those were about $15. Parking, I want to say was 10 and then the tickets were about $30 each. So that was about, that was over a hundred dollars and that's for one day. And when you think about it and compare it to going to Cedar Point, it's actually still cheaper to go to Michigan Inventors than Cedar Point because Cedar Point does have a water park. But as I mentioned in another video, Michigan's Adventure, that $30 one day admission gets you into both the amusement park and the water park because the water park is actually part built into the park. It's like this little ring, but it's connected to the main park. So that is why Michigan Adventures motto is two parks for the price of one fun fun. So I think Michigan's Adventure, yes, it is smaller. Yes, there's not as much to do. I think it's a better deal than driving down to Cedar Point to go to Cedar Point because if you want to go to the water park down there, you have to, again, pay for tickets to go to the water park instead of just paying one price. So I'm still going to take our paper tickets, but all our tickets are right here on my phone, which is great. Also, once we get there and I turn on Bluetooth, I can do this thing called mark my park, mark your parking spot, which it's not going to really, which when I park, it will actually show us right now. It's just showing where I live. It will show us where we parked so that we will be able to find our car. I don't think there's much of a worry about that because we're going to try to get as close to opening as we can. And when you get there close to opening, you actually get to park really close to the park entrance. So I don't think we're worried about that. Um... And then this is really nice. What they've added is this is what this shows you what time the park is open. So it's not going to show up very well. So this is what time the park is open. So today the park is open from 11 to 7. And that's what time it's going to be open when we go Monday, which in the past that is later in the past. It has it would open at 10 a.m. and close at I want to say nine. So the park, so the theme park itself would be open from like 10 to 9 and the water park would be actually be open from 12 to 7. So the hours have changed. So now the park is open from 10 to 7 and the water park is only open. No, the bar, park is open from 11 to 7 and the water park is only open from 12 to 6. So it's a little bit of a sh shorter day, which is actually really nice because plus with me and my dad going by ourselves, that means we won't be getting home at maybe 10 o'clock at night. So especially since I have a meeting the next day with my group for school. Um, it also, and so that's nice knowing the park hours. Also this year, they have decided to close the park down two days a week. So the park is actually closed Tuesdays and Wednesdays to like clean it and stuff. And then it opens up again. I think it's either closed Tuesdays and Wednesdays or Tuesdays and or Wednesdays and Thursdays, but it's closed two days a week. Um, and then actually what they added now is they have ride wait times. Come on. There we go. So when, so this is really nice because it's reminding me definitely of Disney. So when we get to the park, it will actually have the wait time for these rides. And the only rides they're showing are the rides for the theme park. They don't have this for the water park. So this will be nice considering that um, some people who have gone to the park are posting on Facebook and Ask Midland and stuff saying that they have, do not have enough staff to run all the rides. So not all the rides are going to be open. So what they are doing is they are making sure the high-end rides like um, Thunderhawk, Corkscrew, Shivering Timbers, those types of rides, they are always open. And then the smaller rides like Scrambler, Loggers Run, um, Grand Rapids probably, Tilt-A-Whirl, Thunderbolt, those rides will have different shifts. So they won't always be open. So this will be nice because this will actually probably let us know what rides are open 
because I don't do coasters. I really, and I'm, this is the first year I'm debating about going on the Lock Loom ride and Thunderbolt. So this will be really nice because this will show me which rides I do go on will be open and operating. So I'm not actually sure how many rides I'm gonna get to go on and my dad has a bad back. So he's actually not too sure how many rides he's gonna go on. In fact, we might not even go on Funnel of Fear because of how bad my dad's back, my dad's back might be. So I might get out of going on that one. Um, they don't have the water park rides, which kind of stinks, but it is what it is. Also, they sell, um, some people have said at the water park, they only had the Lazy River, a wave pool, and Funnel of Fear open, which is okay with me. I like water parks, but I kind of like going to lakes better, but whatever. It is what it is. Will I be disappointed if I don't get to go on all the rides I want to go on? Yes, but I'm just going to be happy that I'm going to Michigan's Adventure. This is something I wanted to do last year, and they never opened the amusement park. So I will be happy with whatever is open. I will be thrilled because it is just me. I haven't, I didn't really get to go anywhere. Like the first thing I've really done for fun in terms of a trip was getting to go to the Disney outlet store, which I really want to go again for my birthday back in March. But we didn't go to Bronner's last year. We didn't go to Mackinac Island last year. We went up north. We went to Mackinac City one day. So I've done two like day trips during COVID and it's like, I'm, I'm going bonkers because usually I feel like I do a lot more during the summer. Like I go out to Mackinac Island, we go to zoos and stuff and we're not doing that this year. So this is like, I don't care if I don't get to go on all these rides. I'm just happy I'm going. Oh my gosh, this is 40 minutes. I need to wrap this up. I was not planning on this being so long. Thank you for staying with me. Um, and they do have a note here it's called what you need to know before you go. So this is all the, um, the stuff they're doing. They're actually still requiring you to make reservations. Um, what's nice is since I purchased our tickets on May 14th, I don't need to make a reservation because I actually purchased our tickets before the reservation system was put into place. So if you made your reservation before, I think it's May 16th or May 18th, you no bought your tickets before May 16th or May 18th, you don't have to make a reservation because that system was not in place yet. So instead you just get to go any day you want. So that will be nice. Um, there, um, da, 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 da. you can only purchase tickets online. You cannot purchase them at the parks. They are doing, um, temperature checks and they're not doing capacities anymore. Um, they want one member of the group to have the mobile app, which I do. Um, face coverings are required unless you're fully vaccinated. If you're indoors, unless eating or walking, that's interesting because the state of Michigan no longer has a mask mandate, but this is owned by the same company as Cedar Point. So this is owned by Cedar Fair. So they might be doing Cedar Fair guidelines. So Cedar Fair might still be requiring the masks indoors. Um, they no longer have to have do house screenings. They will have hand sanitizing systems. Um, they want you to turn on location, which I will probably do. Um, they want you to self-assess to make sure you don't have any symptoms. Um, da, 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 da. Do not add any reservations. Right here, ticket gets you purchase any ticket prior to May 18th, any two-day ticket or any ticket through an authorized reseller, and it's literally through the park website. Don't, do not need to make a reservation. So what I need to pack before I go is my season pass mobile printed tickets, which I will have, a face covering for each guest aged two years and older who is not fully vaccinated. All guests aged two and older who are not fully vaccinated are required to wear face coverings while indoors, except while waiting in line or for or participating in water attractions or actively eating and drinking. Um, face coverings are recommended but not required indoors or outdoors for guests who are fully vaccinated. So I will be taking a mask just in case, and I am fully vaccinated. Um, right here, contactless payment method other than cash. So they're not saying cash is banned, they just want you to bring a different payment method. So that's why we got the gift cards. Um, and then a mobile phone with the Michigan's app downloaded and location services enabled. So this way you have it on. And then when we get there, they'll at the parking booth, they will ask for proof of payment, which proof of parking payment, which we have because I have it. Um, then they will search our bag, so whatever, that's the same. And then they would like us to scan, and then our touchless turnstiles, they will scan our ticket. So 
yeah so basically it's still a lot of the same stuff um Some dining locations will not be available. All disposable products will be in, will be pre-wrapped. Plastic barriers, contactless payment. Um, some of our indoor merchandise locations have been closed. So basically, it's the same, just different. So this will be interesting. But yeah, I'm so excited. And I'm going to try and film some stuff for the vlog. And hopefully, I get some good footage. Because I didn't film anything for... Um, marvel com for comic book hero night simply because it was fun but it definitely was what i thought it would be i saw there weren't a lot of characters there weren't a lot of people dressed up i felt weird because i was literally the only adult in a full-on outfit there was a couple other adults but most of them were like wearing t-shirts or headbands and here i am just head to toe for loki so yeah that was fun so i didn't film anything unfortunately but i did get to meet spider-man so this vlog is 45 minutes, so I'm going to end it here so I can go get lunch because it's 1.34 and I haven't eaten yet. Whoops. So I will get going for the day. If you guys have any questions about Michigan's adventure or if you would like some advice about planning a trip to Michigan, about stuff to do here in Michigan, drop a comment down below and maybe I will do a video that's all about stuff to do here in Michigan. So places I've been, places I recommend going, and what I think you should bring with you to Michigan as a native Michigander, my advice on what you should bring. A coat. <laughs> um, that's a big one. So let me know what you guys think. If you guys uh, want to see more videos about what it's like living here in Michigan, what I recommend. Anything you guys would like to see me cover on the channel. Like I said, I'm always looking for ideas about new stuff I can post. New videos, I reactions I can do. Stuff like that. And if you like this video, make sure you give me a big old thumbs up. And if you like my channel overall, subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you get the alerts when I post videos. So thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, stay sane, stay healthy. I am sending you all lots of love, hugs, and prayers. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye, everybody.